a psychologist with a heavy interest in neuroscience, once taught a class that I was in, and she mentioned that we know so much about the galaxies in our universe. We have mapped thousands of stars, know where they are, know their approximate ages, whether they're novas, supernovas. We have really learned a lot about the cosmos. But there is one part of our universe that we are really relatively naive about, and that is the human brain. According to neuroscientists, they sort of imagine that the human brain might be the most complex object, at least when it comes to we humans understanding its function in the entire universe. Here is an organ that literally sort of is the ruler, the sovereign over the entire body, regulating everything from cleansing the blood to sleep, you name it. That's what the brain does. And most of it is actually subconscious. We are not even conscious. And then get to consciousness itself. How are we conscious? I think therefore I am is one of the most famous lines. But really, this is beyond comprehension. Yesh nisim gedolim po kol hayom. There are miracles literally happening right inside of our heads every moment, every single day. Hanukkah is the festival of lights for sure. And it is also the festival of miracles. It makes sense to reflect for a few moments. What is a miracle? And what is the Hanukkah miracle? that we celebrate these eight days. The following exchange between a student and a teacher will help us in our discussion. Okay, class, here is the Hanukkah story in a nutshell. The Syrian king is upset that the Jews are fighting with each other over assimilation. And the Syrian king is just leaving, having taken over Egypt. And so he attacks Jerusalem. He imposes restrictions on observance because he actually supports the assimilationists. And he puts an altar to Zeus. In, in reaction, a priest by the name of Mattathias and his five sons who call themselves the Hammers, the Maccabees, fight a successful guerrilla campaign against these Syrians. And they retake over the temple, clean, it up and worship the one God with lights and Hallel and actually an observance of Sukkot in the month of December. And they call it Hanukkah, rededication, because they actually built a brand new altar. The holiday is eight days because of Sukkot, not because of the miracle of oil. Yes, class. The miracle of the oil didn't happen. Miracles don't happen, the teacher says. Sally then raises her hand and she says, I'm sorry, teacher, that you feel comfortable making a blanket statement that miracles don't happen. Think about it, teacher. A small group of Jews overcoming uh, the Assyrian Greeks, isn't that pretty miraculous? How about 2,000 years later, when 850,000 Jews overcome a combined army of 20 million in 1948? Correct me if I'm wrong, teacher, she says. The miracles are all around us. We just need to be willing to recognize them. The teacher now feels challenged. The teacher says, yeah, those are extraordinary events, but miracles. Miracles are definition. They are when the law of nature is changed by the divine. Sally responds, I guess you and I are going to have to disagree because for me, miracles are nature. The bell rings so the teacher cannot respond. 
I agree with the professor's idea that as far as we know, the laws of nature are not broken. But in my mind, breaking the laws of nature is not required for a miracle. Miracles to me are the occurrences that evoke awe and wonder, the ones that we cannot easily explain, such as how our brains work, why we are conscious, and how it regulates our body subconsciously. Some miracles are common and mundane, like a beating heart. Others, yes, are more rare and extremely unlikely, a small army overtaking a larger one. And what about all those events that we read in the Bible where the laws of nature are broken? The sea is split, the sun stands still for Joshua, one days of oil lasts for eight, and so forth. Noam Sion teaches that these unnatural acts are poetic and symbolic ones. Think about the liberated slaves from Egypt. When they reflect on their experience, the poetic response is that it felt like they were walking on dry land where there once was a sea trapping them in. When Joshua leads the conquest of Jericho in one day attack, it was so extraordinary. It was as if the daylight lasted longer than it was naturally supposed to do. It's poetry. Hanukkah celebrates the extraordinary military victory of the few against the mighty. The light of Judaism was not extinguished. That is the miracle. And actually, when you look at our prayers for Hanukkah in our prayer book, and even the prayers about our daily miracles, there's no breaking of nature. We say, Allah nisim vi Allah porkan. We thank you, God, for the miracles for the redemptive acts, the heroic, extraordinary ones, and the military victories. And then in that same uh, uh, Modim prayer, the prayer for Thanksgiving, we say, imanu, That your miracles that are every day with us, your wonders that are there all times, evening, morning, and noon. That's not breaking of nature. That is nature itself. Every day of health and being together is a miracle. Our bodies have so much moving parts and coordination that we need to be healthy. Nature is the miracle. This is the holiday of miracles. Hanukkah is a minor holiday. It is not a Yom Tov where our daily life is paused. And I think that this is on purpose. Hanukkah's themes, while important, are not the essence of Judaism. You all know that here in America, Hanukkah unfortunately has become perhaps overhyped because obviously of its sister holiday, Christmas. But I encourage all of us to put Hanukkah in its proper place in celebration. Light the menorah, enjoy, sing, recognize all the miracles that are around us, but let's save our energy for the major holidays in Judaism. Shabbat Shalom.